With all the news of the inevitable schism in the church in Germany coming, and with a de facto schism already existing within the church in that country, and let's be real, pretty much everywhere, often people ask what it is that we can do to preserve the faith. With an honest assessment of the state of the church being that a de facto schism has existed between the modernists and the Catholics that get called traditional Catholics being the inescapable state of things in the church today, this question is one that the faithful who only want the faith as it has always existed prior to the modernist errors is one that we've been grappling with for decades now. The Auxiliary Bishop of Kazakhstan doesn't write many public letters these days, but he does offer frequent interviews with various Catholic outlets, and I have his recommendations to the faithful in Germany that went under the radar last week. His words are applicable to the faithful in general, regardless of where you are geographically, as anyone who really knows the faith well knows that the German bishops really are just a logical extension of Francis's work and the work of the modernists in the church that have been running things for several decades. So let's heed the words of the auxiliary bishop from Kazakhstan on this, the bishop whose name, if I say it here, causes weird issues with our hosts. And, I'll, and remember, his words are not just for the faithful in Germany, though they are targeted there. If you want to join the folks supporting the work of this channel, you can find options to do so in the description box below this video for as little as $1 a month. Thanks to the supporters for their support of this channel. On Friday, I told you about Cardinal Mueller's words to the faithful in Germany, about the church in Germany being on the brink of schism and going its own way. A week prior, one of the followers of Luther, who was the pastor at Luther's Wittenberg Church, told the German bishops that what is desperately needed was for them to remain true to the deposit of the faith, and not to have the Catholic Church embrace what his own forebears did, which was frankly astonishing to hear. But today we have some wise words from the auxiliary bishop from Kazakhstan, who has his mind and heart set on the needs of the faithful in his ancestral homeland of Germany. His words are something that we outside of Germany should heed as well. For the way the church in Germany goes, so will go many other dioceses and national bishops' conferences within a few years. The bishop begins by telling all of us to cling to the words of the deposit of the faith, to cling to what the church has always taught. That is a scriptural instruction if there ever was one. As St. Paul tells us in his second letter to Timothy, chapter 3, verse 14, And if we are to cling to the faith, then we should also cling to one another in the faith, for we are stronger together in his own words. Firstly, they should self-assuredly and joyfully confess the fullness of the Catholic faith, which they know from the Catechism and from the ever-valid uh, documents of the Magisterium of the Church, the bishop told John Henry Weston's website. They should organize meetings and conferences to explain and to strengthen the Catholic faith, he said, adding that they should also organize prayer chains of supplication and reparation for the sins against the Catholic faith, the sanctity of the sacraments, end of the moral life, end quote. Now, how often do we do that, I wonder? How often do we offer reparation to Christ for the sins of others? It's a rather basic Catholic practice, one that our forebearers did at least once in a while, one that many of us, though, bristle at today because we all have, to some degree or another, embraced the philosophies of the modern world, even if those same individual and atomizing philosophies have been categorically rejected by the Church and declared to be sinful by their very nature, going back centuries. Why should we be made to pay the sin debt for others while on earth? Because Christ did it for us, and we are to live like Christ. And he told us that the prayers of the saints are especially powerful. And frankly, the saints would do this sort of thing. They did. They did atone for the sins of others, and they did it voluntarily, and they often did it with joy. But let's continue, because the auxiliary bishop has more to say on this. He reminds us that if our bishops are not going to stay united in the faith with us, that we should cling to those priests and bishops who will remain true to the deposit of the faith. Quote, Faithful Catholics must support, in many ways, bishops and priests in Germany who choose to remain true to all the teachings of the Catholic faith, he said. Faithful Catholics must put aside petty differences that separate them from other faithful Catholics and take a stand united together. All those who still want to live the fullness of the Catholic faith should unite together, pushing away some existing differences between them, which are substantially of a secondary character, in view of the ongoing massive apostasy from the Catholic faith in Germany, the bishop said. End quote. He used the word here, apostasy. He isn't holding back at all. He's being far more honest about the situation than most others are, or he's being more astute in his observations. 
The schism isn't merely a schism, for, let's be real, the Orthodox aren't schism, but they hold something that is mostly recognizable as the faith when you really get down to it. There may be some theological differences for the great minds of our time to work out with them, but the faith is more or less the same there as it is anywhere else. What they've done is only to reject papal authority and establish an illicit hierarchy with territorial jurisdiction. What is going on in Germany is nothing like that at all. They've decided that sacred scripture is full of errors on certain subjects, that the words of our Lord and St. Paul and the rest cannot be trusted on the issues that the world is most interested in today. In such a situation, the laity must follow the Good Shepherds, even if that means an inconvenient drive to Mass on Sundays. He also says that we must pray. Pray for good shepherds, for living saints to be sent among us to guide us in the faith. Quote, Finally, the bishop said that the Catholics in Germany who seek to be faithful during these times should implore God for new apostles and ask St. Boniface and St. Peter Canisius to intercede, and also St. Michael, St. Joseph, and, in the first place, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, to whom Germany was consecrated. End quote. However, thing, however, things are not all sunshine and roses, according to him. The church in Germany is de facto already split from the church on irreconcilable grounds. And I'm glad that he recognizes this, and I wish that someone in the Vatican would begin the process of getting the buildings and rest into the hands of newly appointed authorities for the church in that country. He was asked if there is anything that can be done practically to rectify the situation with the church in Germany, or is it already too late? The bishop told his interview, quote, that from the human point of view there is little hope. To save the Catholic Church in Germany, there is first the need of prayer and reparation for the sins against the Catholic faith and the sanctity of the sacraments, committed in the past decade in the in first place by representatives of the hierarchy, cardinals, bishops, and priests. There is a need for divine intervention that will raise some new apostles of the Catholic faith in Germany, he said. End quote. But how did we get to this place? It's rather simple, and something I've been saying here for years now. The Church in Germany, like the Church across the rest of the world, has become more of a materialist, naturalist, secular institution rather than a church. In Germany, the church is attached to a levy from Caesar, where the church is paid directly by Caesar regularly for most of its funds. And that certainly has changed things for the worse. Quote, like no other particular church in the world, the Catholic Church in Germany possesses a bureaucracy to the limit of the reasonable, he said. In addition to that, the majority of the office holders of the administrative apparatus of the church in Germany as well are paid on the base of the so-called Kirkenstuhr, a church tax collected by the government, end quote. Sound familiar? Sure, outside of Germany, there is not quite a, such a cozy relationship with Caesar as there is there, but everywhere else, the church receives funds from Caesar for his various programs, and the influence that has had on the bishops is obvious to anyone watching and who notes their habits of going along with every one of Caesar's commands. We know this all too well these days. And the interesting thing is that in Germany, the church there in that country employs something like two to three million people directly. Now think about that. That's a lot of people. I mean, yeah, Germany is not a small country, but that is an enormous amount of people for the church to employ directly. Anyway, proactively, the auxiliary bishop from Kazakhstan offers some other advice. This to the Vatican, which they, of course, probably won't heed. And that advice is to appoint bishops who are orthodox in their teaching and steadfast to the deposit of the faith. That means he is addressing this to Pope Francis, and let's be real, that's not likely to happen. But maybe it could, since I doubt Francis wants this situation to spiral into full schism. And in those situations where there is not a candidate for the episcopate available, the bishop here recommends that an apostolic administrator should be put in charge of the diocese on Rome's behalf for the time being. But to finish this, the bishop says something similar here. He invokes Cardinal Ratzinger's prophetic words for the church from the late 1960s, and I really want you to talk, think about this. About Those words are Ratzinger's famous sort of forecast of the church growing smaller. I'll paraphrase him here because he gets a little too forceful for this place, but in essence he says the following, The church will shrink in Germany, and it is from this smaller, more faithful church that he sees God renewing the entire church in Germany. The size and resources of the church in Germany does not constitute the body of the faithful. And he thinks that what will be left is a tiny remnant, and that with that remnant, God will renew the church in Germany, since the majority of those who are still nominally and on paper Catholic, and even a considerable part of the clergy, long ago stepped away from divine revelation. In this time, the faithful should be joyful and embrace what comes with eyes fixed upon our Lord. Now, that seems like sound advice for any Catholic anywhere in these times, and it does sort of bring us back to Cardinal, then Cardinal Ratzinger's famous words. 
And those with eyes to see can see that the institutional church today has little in common with the historic church, and that this situation predates Francis by several decades. Cling to the faith, regardless of what the men in collars and the men with croziers might have to say about it. Many of us have been saying this for years, and it is one reason that of all the hermeneutic of continuity bishops in the church, he is the only one I really, really have any trust in at all. I am not an adherent of the hermeneutic of continuity. But what do you think about this? I know that some want more proactive things to do, but prayer is extremely proactive, and supporting the good clergy and prelates wherever they are is essential as well. But let me know your thoughts on this in the comments, please. And like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss an update. It actually does help. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.